So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Matthias Pechinger, or basically Matthias. Um, today I'm going to present uh, our new framework Zoomonity, Bridging Sumo and Unity for Enhanced Traffic Simulation Experience. This is a joint work um, from me and Johannes Linden, who initially started this project a few years already ago. So, yeah. um, so what is uh, Sumonity. Firstly, we have um, uh, Sumo on the right side, and we have uh, also Unity on the left. Yeah, Unity on the right side from your field of view. And in the middle, we have uh, Sumonity, which connects both things. So you can see, like everyone knows, the visualization from Sumo, and then again, like I said, Unity on the other side, which is like the 3D submicroscopic simulation. So basically. Um, giving the simulation another level by getting this 3D perspective in. And what we're doing is basically Zoomonity is the bridge in between both of them. Why do we do this? So the basic idea is uh, why use Sumo? Obviously because it's open source, it's really accessible and it really leverages the scientific work of everyone. At our chair, uh, Chair of Traffic Engineering and Control, um, of the, the Technical University of Munich, we have um, VR and AR laboratories, and here we have like a cave VR systems. We have head-mounted VR. Therefore, we need um, with our micro mobility users, we really need um, proper environments and yeah, micro mobility simulators here and uh, digital twin. And digital twin is more, most people just say it's a physical uh, replica, but it also needs. Um, replica of the traffic and so therefore we need a uh, sumo so we have an accurate um, replica of the traffic state also as well so if we write a paper or anything and we do simulation we can say okay we have this that demand set up so we have like proper traffic flow which is this one so the methodology of the system and uh, basically we're using city GML data, which is different level of detail buildings. I'll get closer to that and satellite images. Then we're using MathWorks Roadrunner and, uh, for the map and scenario creation. And then we extract from there the microscopic simulation, Sumo, um, basically using the OpenDrive export from MathWorks and continue with this process and also export uh, Unity world, which is the 3D world, so they're both aligned already. And in between, again, there is Sumonity, our interface. I'll get a little bit more into detail about these things, because reviewer asked for that as well, which is also uh, obvious and interesting. So we have a 3D, um, we have a satellite image, and based on that, we can draw the road networks. And here as well, digital twins are really, really time consuming and exhausting. And yeah, here we have um, the model we are using currently in our simulations. And here I want to quickly point out to the project at TUM, which is called tum to twin You can find it on GitHub on this wording, where we um, share like point clouds and all these things. It's managed by a different chair, and actually there's five chairs involved in the whole project. And yeah, we also upload like the environment we're using for our VR experiences. So. Then next, um, MathWorks Roadrunner. Many people know it, some don't know it. I don't want to do a big um, session for MathWorks here, but this project or this product is quite nice. Um, that's what it looks like. What we can see here is basically that we can, um, we can load in the level of detail three buildings. Um, we export it to OBJ files, just drop it in there, um, align it with the um, satellite images, and then we can draw on top of the satellite images the road networks. This is a lot of manual labor, but in the end you come up with a really, really accurate uh, digital, physical digital twin. And from there we can export the Open Drive network, which aligns in Sumo, and the um, film box scene graph or FBX file, film box file, um, to align everything with Unity. So, let's get a little bit more into detail with um, our architecture, Sumonity. What does uh, Sumonity do? We're using the Tracy interface, 
and there we use some basic uh, functions and get the agent information and then we also calculate in there so-called look ahead point and what the look ahead point is I will get to that later on which is specific for control theories we're applying here which is this part and then we have a TCP connection which uh, connects it to the uh, Unity environment in C sharp and in here we evaluate lateral and longitudinal control commands and we connect to assets. So what do I mean by that? The, for each vehicle we're using, for each agent that spawned in Sumo, we also spawn an agent in Unity. So each agent then has a physical replica or physical model running. And then we're running the lat uh, longitudinal and lateral control commands, meaning that we're actually running the algorithms that we would run on automated vehicles, for example. So my field of expertise um, is a little bit in the field of automated vehicles, so I can program vehicles and control them with lateral and longitudinal movements. And so this is what we're doing for each individual actor. And then we come to the assets, and the assets basically are the vehicles. For example, I want to develop a VR simulation. I do not want to spend a lot of time developing uh, vehicle models and uh, yeah, this is uh, where we use the assets from Asset Store in Unity. So, a little bit more into the control theory. So, we have two different controllers, one for longitudinal and one for lateral movements. We have for the longitudinal controller, we have this system here. I will guide you through this step by step. We have the reference position, which is basically the position from uh, Sumo. And then we have an actual position, which is the position of our vehicle in Unity. And then basically we calculate the error and apply a proportional controller, which is a really, really simple controller. No fancy PID, it's just a proportional controller. And we do the same for the velocity. We take the reference velocity and we take the actual velocity. Um, if you're a little bit into control theory, you can see, or you could say, why do you even need the velocity or why do you need the position? So if we only need the velocity, we get an integrating error, which is a big problem in the end, because we would not end up matching the correct position. And if we only use the position, um, I thought like this should definitely work and I was playing around with P and I and different gates and the D part of the controller and yeah, it was really unstable, it was overshooting a lot of the time and then we also integrated the, the velocity which smoothed, smoothed out the whole um, yeah, control theory, the whole torque input. Um, and if you're also a little bit more into control theory, you could see that this division by two could also be moved into the peak gains of the controller, but yeah. Uh, this is how I tested it. I want to keep things as purely as I show them. And in the end, we come up with the torque input. So this is, for example, for a vehicle or for a bicycle. We produce a torque input, feed it to the system, which will then again generate our velocity and our position. So, next step is the lateral control approach um, we're using in the system, which is a pure pursuit controller. Pure pursuit controllers are really, really um, lightweight on computation, and I want to explain, explain it a little bit to you. So we have our eco vehicle here on the left and right, so just side by side views. And we also have a, a reference trajectory as the dash dotted line here. And what we want to achieve with the controller is we want to um, maneuver as close to our reference trajectory as possible. And with this control approach, we have like this look ahead position. Some people also call this carrot follower. There, there's not one pure person control that different approaches for that basically are all the same. You have a point, you want to look at it. And that's where you want to go. For example, if you are driving on a highway, you don't look like one step ahead of you. You look like a point in the future to try steer towards that point. And that's this basically. And so what we can see here, the left is just for you to get the representation, what it kind of looks with the Sumo background. On the right, you can see basically extend the um, longitudinal axis of your vehicle and then draw two lines um, 
yeah, one is the extension and one is the intersection between your center of the car and the look ahead points. Then you just take the angle um, and this basically is your steering angle for the vehicle, which is quite simple and not that cost effective with computing time. And of course you can add like a uh, gain to the steering angle to um, control it even further. Let's continue to the results. What you can see here is in the foreground the bicycle. This is a Unity asset we're using for the bicycle, complete physical model in the background, which we did not develop, we're using this um, off the shelf. And then this is uh, this red dot is for our visualization a follow point, so we can see what's going on if everyone's following like the right distance and so on. What you can see here is the actual and the reference trajectory with the solid line is the actual trajectory and the red dashed line here is the reference trajectory. And we can see that zoomed out it looks quite nice um, and, but we also have some points where we should zoom in a little bit. I will zoom into the um, worst part later. Uh, but here you can see we have a starting from the bottom right um, going um, to the top left with the right through the end and in the mid we have a lane change maneuver. So here we have a little bit of deviation from the reference track. Here as well, so every time we kind of um, actuate the steering we deviate from our reference track. And here at the right third we have the highest deviation from the reference track. So why is this happening? And here um, I want to show you a little bit about the look ahead distance, the LAD. Um, I can also talk a little bit after the session about LAD min and max values, but this is look ahead at minimum look ahead distance of a vehicle. And if we look at five meters, we can see that the vehicle on this right turn overshoots onto the um, other lane, to the upcoming lane on the other side, which we definitely do not want. Um, so we can increase the look ahead distance, so we look further and basically cut the corner a little bit more. And at six meters, we still overshoot a little bit, and at seven meters, the overshoot, overshoot decreases. Um, basically, we're cutting the corner now. And finally, um, also, I want to go to the next extreme value is at eight meters. We can see that we yeah, cut the corner even further. So, finally, we, thought, uh, we said we're going to use the look ahead distance of seven meters. So, Basically, what we can see here, this um, reference path is taken from Sumo, and we did not really tune the reference path to be perfect for a vehicle to drive along. So we have this physical model that is following this reference path, and with this look-ahead distance, it basically does, does it like a human driver does. It looks at the position the future and drives toward this position. I do not drive perfectly on the reference track, but kind of make a little bit more realistic um, driving path, which is physically um, rather feasible for this model. So, um, about the accuracy of the system, we measured for the run you just saw, um, the positional error, and here we can see that we have about 0 to 0 0.5 meter positional error. This is a result, and you can also see like um, the, the different crosses, and there are like one is at the low part, one is in the middle, like at 0 0.25 meters, and one is at the upper part at around 0 0.5 meters. For the simulation we were running, um, I don't want to go too deep into soft and hard real-time conditions, but basically we were running um, Unity at 50 hertz and Sumo at 10 hertz, so the vehicle in Unity was updated way more often, so many times more than the sumo simulation which resulted in that the controllers on the other side didn't get as many updates. Um, if they would have gotten more updates, we would get um, a lower error here. So, meaning the longitudinal controller here is um, quite close to where we wanted to be. Or, yeah, I think it's quite good. Um, let's go back to the other image with the reference trajectory. And here we can see, I've just moved it, um, so you can see the distance where this happened, and you can see the error. So this is our lateral error, basically. We're driving along the road where we have the 0 0.5 meters to 0 meters, almost 0 meters. And then we have an increase to 1.1 or 1.2 meters, 
at this lane change maneuver. And again, the same happens on changing to the right lane again. And here, the most interesting part here, which you already saw close up, is like the biggest um, deviation reference track are these 1.4 meters where we're doing the right turn maneuver. So what's also interesting is um, the desired and current velocity. So desired velocity basically, again, is the velocity that the vehicle in Sumo is running at. And then the current velocity, or actual velocity, is the velocity of the vehicle in unity. And if we were looking at, it, at a human driver, actually it would not perfectly drive at 8.33 meters per second. It would actually yeah, just do like a little bit oscillation around our um, value we want to have. And here we can also see the behavior of the positional control because it it has a little bit more weight than the velocity controller because we're using the velocity of the sumo vehicle just to smooth the control a little bit. In conclusion, so what can we do? We can uh, track the vehicles in sumo, um, in unity from sumo uh, quite accurately. We have a from our point of view, a more realistic and natural driving behavior in the lateral movement. The longitudinal movement is, we want to follow Sumo as close as possible because we don't want to run into other traffic participants. So we kind of have to follow along with the velocity and with basically with the position. So there are some trade-offs here. And also with the torque input to the vehicle, which is a little bit, um, yeah, like you would expect the controller to be. And yeah, uh, if you want to run this, if you're running anything with Unity, if you want to run anything with VR environments in the future, you could uh, use Sumonity, and we're also developing it further. Talking about um, future work, we are actually already working on new features. And we already wrote the paper some time ago, and there we were discussing, yeah, we need the traffic lights in our simulation because yeah, if someone's walking or riding with a bicycle through the street network and he cannot see the traffic lights, that's uh, yeah, nice to see the traffic, but we need also the traffic lights. We're already um, testing this. It right now has a lot of um, computational issues, which we're figuring out, and the pedestrian simulation. This again means we want to use the simulation of the pedestrians from Sumo and just move the pedestrians as Sumo does. And this is also a little bit, we have to have a different approach than, a little bit different approach compared to the yeah, vehicles. And here I can show you a short video um, about the current state and I'm quite happy about it because my colleague just sent it uh, to me um, one week ago before he went on vacation. And you can see on the bottom right there are pedestrians walking into the scene and we already now are able to have like uh, huge streams of pedestrians walking. And of course, at this state, at some point, um, the simulation gets overloaded and yeah, working on this as well. But for now, for this intersection, we can have the pedestrians. So this is uh, what it looks like from top down. And I want to thank you for your attention. That's all from my side and uh, looking forward to your questions.